And we are live uh, for a new episode of the Electric Podcast. Welcome back, everyone. As usual, I'm joined by Seth Weintraub. How are you doing today, Seth? I'm good. All right. Well, let's uh, dive right in. We have a few, not too many news this week. It was kind of uh, a slower week in, uh, in the EV world, but there was a big weekend with the unveiling of the both EV and EUV last weekend. So we're going to discuss that all later um on the show, but we're going to start as usual with the Tesla news this week. And uh, the the bigger news this week, I would I would venture to say, was the the price cut for the Model S, uh, Model Three, and Model Y, I should say. And um, yes, yeah, some some pretty significant price cut. Sorry, I'm, I'm hearing myself uh, from you. I think that. So. Uh, hmm. Not sure. If, yeah. It's coming through my head. Headset. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, I think I'm hearing from you. Uh, right now. It sounds not too bad, but I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you're reading the same thing. But I'm, I'm re- I have a lot of feedback. I think and it feels like it's from like your, your speaker. Of your, there's nothing coming out of your speaker on your, on your side. No. One two one two one two. It's strange. All right, let's power on. Um, yeah, and the significant price cuts, especially for the base version on both uh, on Model 3 and Model Y, the standard range plus uh, gets down to $37,000 from $38,000. And um, the Model Y gets an even bigger price cut from $42,000 to uh, $40,000. So the, the Model Y for the first time now is under forty. And if you remember, that standard range Model Y didn't exist until last month when it was... Uh, uh, launched by Tesla, so so this is a uh, this is a quick price drop for the for the new trim of the of the electric SUV. But uh, other than that, uh, the the long range all wheel drive for both Model Y and Model Three stay the same at forty seven and fifty thousand dollars respectively. Uh, but uh, the 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 performance version, interestingly, they get the price increased by a thousand dollars, which which adds up to fifty six. For the Model Three performance and uh, sixty-one for the Model Y performance, so uh, people are trying to read into w- w- what is happening here exactly. There's a lot of uh, different theories. Uh, of course, the, the main one, if you follow more of the Tesla uh, of, of, of the of the Tesla narrative, is that oh, we we adjust the pricing when we make improvement in terms of uh, production efficiency and everything so we pass those on to the consumer uh, in term of uh, in in order to be aligned with our mission to accelerate the advent of energy transport all makes sense could be the case here but there's also a bunch of different theories here because um, also we, we've been talking about the green act that uh, could um, bring back a significant tax credit f- and in the U.S. for for because of course those price changes are in the U.S. By the way, though there's been some a few other adjustments on other markets, but uh, uh, other than Japan, I don't think there was anything significant with Mall Three and Mall Y. So we discussed last week. Was it last week when we talked about the Green Act, or the week before that? Uh, whenever it was introduced, anyway. Yeah, I can't um, remember. Uh, it was introduced in Congress and. We, we, we discussed like they're going to bring basically uh, extend the limit from 200,000 deliveries to 600,000, giving Tesla G and GM another 400,000 and more uh, vehicles to, to, to receive a 7,000 tax credit instead of a, uh, of a 7,500. And surprisingly, there wasn't any specific price requirements in there like a lot of other countries are introducing like in canada where there's a price limit on the model that can get that can receive a, a tax credit uh, in 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 canada we have like a 45 and fifty five thousand dollar limit depending on some configurations uh there wasn't that in uh, in the green act as it was proposed but as as we discussed it, it could change by the time it gets adopted if it gets adopted though it, it is likely and so some people are speculating that uh, a 40,000 uh, limit might be introduced, which could have um, created this uh, this price change, especially for the Model Y, so that the Model Y gets access, at least at the standard version. Could have been also why Tesla uh, even introduced the standard range in the first place, because as you remember, Elon Musk says that Tesla wouldn't introduce that version. He didn't like the range that the, the vehicle was getting. So uh, of course, Tesla is most likely in talks with, with the... The new Biden administration. Well, we know that they are in talks. I mean, Elon even confirmed that they suggested uh, 
uh, you suggested to them to introduce a, a, a carbon tax. But uh, we also know that Tesla is part of the new Zeta um, Association for uh, electric vehicles in the U.S. that is pushing for a national national standards and whatnot. So this lobbying group, really, we, people involved in there would, would know what they're what they're planning in terms of the tax credit and everything. So that might be something that I've been in, in talks for a while. So Tesla is, might be making some move to to take advantage of that preemptively. Um, that that's my take on it. But uh, I mean. It's speculation, obviously. Well, thirty-seven thousand. If uh, you get a seven thousand dollar tax credit, brings the Model Three below thirty thousand bucks, which would be a pretty big deal, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that th you know, obviously, seven thousand dollars is the number being thrown around now. So that prospect is is obviously there, and I agree with you. Like, uh, if if the Green Act does have a forty thousand dollar cap, Tesla's uh, got a Model Y for you there. So. I think I think the new pricing makes a lot of sense and, and clearly uh, uh, you know less expensive overall. The problem, as we have mentioned a few times, is that the uncertainty of the act, you know, whether it gets passed or not and, and in what form people are going to wait. Like they're no, no, who's going to buy a car now if it's not, you know, we don't know if it's going to be retroactive. I don't think it's going to be retroactive. So uh, everybody who's talking about buying a Tesla now is thinking, yeah. well, I'm just going to wait till this comes through. Yeah, this is this has been confusing because uh, because it's a tax credit. You think all right, if it happens in the tax year, but they, you can deduct from that. So if the delivery happened then, if you paid for the car during that year, it, it will work. But the the way that it was framed in, in the proposal, at least, it, it didn't sound like that. It says when it, when it get adopted. So yeah, that that was confusing. I've been trying to 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 gain some information from from sources. Of course, like I said in the past few quarters, Tesla has really tightened up the the delivery the the delivery goals, the in the, the sales, uh, the, the sales data, but I've been trying to, to get some some information and in how this affected the sales because, I, like you said, I would assume that that it would be quite significant because I mean, especially for standard range model three, uh, thirty seven thousand dollars, like seven thousand difference is is, is massive. Uh, so so, so you, no no one would be buying a car if you think that there's even a 50% chance that you, you could get $7,000 off that car uh, within the next 10 months. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, so also for, for the bold TV UV that just released those also uh, that, that put a big question marks around those cars because um, they, they could also potentially get a, a new tax credit uh, at the same time for all the other vehicles that are still on the old program. Well, that's, that's a $500 more that you want right now. If you, so, there's, there's a, it's a two uh, double-edged swords, really, because uh, you, technically it, it would bring it down the tax credit by 500 bucks for the for the vehicles that are for for the makes that haven't reached that 200,000 threshold just yet. Yeah, I mean, either way, they should get through this quicker, like figure it out and and get it done before mm -hmm. uh, before too long, because nobody's going to be buying. Yeah, yeah fewer, they're, they're... Pe fewer people going to be buying Teslas and GMs until then. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see how it's affecting this sales right now. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, like the increase on the performance version without any change in actual specs, uh, as far as I can tell. But as you know, Tesla is weird about that. They will introduce changes and not show them in the configurator for for a while. So we don't we don't know exactly what might be happening here. But yeah, uh, interesting price change that uh, happened overnight uh, two two days ago. All right, uh, still talking about the Model S refresh. We had never got that um, that call that was supposed to happen, but uh, it's um, uh, so we we're kind of just working with what we have in terms of the Model S refresh right now. And there's the big question around the steering wheel that remains. People want to know if the, the butterfly is going to be standard or is going to be an option. If, are you even going to be able to have the round uh, around steering wheel? Are you going to be able to have the stock or are you really, were we really done with the stocks and everything? So um, the little development that happened this week is that uh, a test vehicle, a test model S refresh was spotted in Ohio and, uh, and it had the around steering wheel. I say, I say regular steering wheel in in quotes in the um, in the video because uh, in, in in the article because I mean 
you could argue that the shape of the new steering wheel, you know, the butterfly shape, is not the biggest change to it. Is the removal of all the stock and all the user interface now being the force touch buttons and everything that is arguably the bigger change, and and that's still the case with that steering wheel. So the, this is still a new Tesla steering wheel yeah. with the force touch button. You can see even the scrolls. Well, you cannot see the force touch buttons, but you can see that there's no stock, so there has to be some force touch button on it, and the scrolls a little bit different too. But this is a standard round uh, steering wheel there. Clearly a test vehicle because a uh, little cup here is not very high, not hiding very well a, a stop button that is standard for prototypes. I thought that, that was screen. hilarious. That, <laughs> I think that's not uh, legal that way. Like that, that stop button is supposed to be accessible, not not covered by a yeah. Dixie cup. Yeah, but uh, you know, <laughs> piece of someone. Uh, Someone touch it inadvertently a few, a few too many times, and now they're yeah, like, somebody like, need it or something. It's more dangerous to have it in the open like that than than to have the cup on it. Maybe um, one interesting thing from that picture that that uh, the, on the prototype that was spotted is that, like I talked about the earlier, we, we couldn't see those buttons on the release of Tesla, but uh, I found them in documents that we obtained that said that there was some force touch button for the the drive modes uh, underneath the phone. This is the phone charger right there that's embedded in the center console. And there you can see them clearly because Tesla put some tape on it with clear uh, clear indication of park, reverse, neutral, and drive. So yeah, like I said, when we first talked about, about that, like I don't think the, the removal of the stock, at least for the drive modes and people saying, oh, now the, with the autopilot that it's supposed to automatically detect which drive mode to use, that's a big deal and everything. I like, if you don't like that, I mean, they're right there. <laughs> they're really right yeah. there you just click on those and i mean you have the you have the the, the mustang Mackie that basically has a dial right at the same spot that the, those are and this yeah. is not that different really yeah i mean compared to some of the other stuff like the uh the bmw i3 which has that weird dial on top of the dashboard mm -hmm. and uh some of the other stuff going on this is actually kind of normal yeah, the, the bigger changes are, are probably more significant in terms of the user interface will be more like the um, uh, the blinkers, like the turn signals. That's people are like you grew up however long it was that you've been driving cars. It's it's always been a stock that you've been, you've been pulling. Uh, so that's that's a bigger change. But I mean, th this is a clear indication of Tesla's Tesla's strategy with with, with self driving. Like the company has been so focused on self driving, so confident about the, its ability to bring self driving to market, that they they've been making change to the user experience of driving a car, and 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 sometimes even lacking in some specific area because they're like, yeah, once it's self driving, it won't even matter. That I feel like that that has been like a a, a trend for Tesla. I mean, even things when you that you can think like a like heads up display. Like if you if you drive like one of the latest Audis and and, and BMW and Mercedes, other vehicle that like Mall S is obviously going to compete with, they have some very very good heads up displays now in those cars. Like they are actually useful. They look great. Uh, they're they're fun to use. And uh, Tesla never, never invested too much into that and trying to bring that to market, a version of that. And I think because they're like, yeah, what, what, what do you need that for when, when it's self-driving? Uh, I feel I feel that's one part of the trend. And now, of course, we're seeing things like <laughs> getting rid of the turn signals and, and even the drive modes. But yeah, I mean, that prototype... Um, also, the person that spotted uh, some a Tesla owner from the Tesla owner Michigan Club uh, in on, on the Facebook group uh, said that uh, he asked it was spotted at a local service center in Toledo, and they asked the service people if that round steering wheel is going to be an option, and they did say yes. Um, now it's still not on the configurator. It's still not an option, even though Tesla is letting you place an order right now for the new Model S. And when I asked my sources at Tesla, they said that they haven't communicated to the cell force anything about uh, it being an option. But like we reported, the, the image appeared on not consumer facing, but in the source code at Tesla's website with the standards, the round staying wheel. And just now Tesla posted a new video uh, on its Twitter of the very short video of the Tesla Plaid winter testing, and it does show that it has a round steering wheel. So, and you should note that that steering wheel that you're looking at right there, the the one in the the 
uh, sales stuff is the exact same steering wheel that the the beta car had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like when it comes to the winter testing, I, I, like I would the the drive modes, the force touch button. Okay, that's one thing. But uh, the butterfly shape needs to be tested too. I feel like because because the butterfly shape does change a lot of things in terms of the driving experience, especially in things like winter testing, where where like if you lose control of the car and everything, that's that's when you you want to be able like to turn the wheel properly and everything. And it's not just about it's about configuring the the. The, the wheel to turn a certain amount uh, specifically for the butterfly shape because you cannot just do the normal motion of rotating like that. So um, it, 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 it's a strange situation. Uh, some some more clarity would be appreciated, but I mean, you cannot ask too much of Tesla these days when it comes to, to communications and clarity. Not their forte. Not much of anything coming out of there. Yep, yep, yep. All right, staying with uh, some prototype sightings. Uh, another Tesla semi was sighted this week. Uh, this time, uh, is our friend at uh, Sacramento Tesla, Jerome, uh, spotted the vehicle uh, in Tucky, Truckee, sorry. It's Tucky or Truckee? Truckee. I wrote Truckee, yeah. Truckee, California, uh, in between uh, Sacramento and, and, and Reno, Nevada. So it's um, we, we we saw one uh, going from the Bay Area through and was going east and it ended up in, in Chicago last week and uh, it was clearly a new Tesla Semi, the first one that we've seen in, in the first new one that we've seen in three years, but now a second one, the second new one, so the fourth <laughs> overall Tesla Semi that we knew about and clearly a different one. There's uh, there's some changes in the back here that we can see that deforms the picture, but. The back of the other one didn't look like that at all. Uh, maybe maybe it's, it was going from Fremont. My feeling is that it's being those uh, prototypes are being built in Fremont, and then shipped maybe to Gigafactory to have the powertrain, because uh, uh, or, or the battery pack at least or something like that. Because uh, uh, we we know that that that's where. Um, uh, Tesla has been installing some production capacity for for uh, the new every new powertrain that they've been developing, even the Model S, the new Model S, new Model X. This uh, they, they have a new drivetrain there and everything that they are they're building. So it could make sense to make the the same thing for the Tesla Semi, but uh, very when encouraging. It'd be easier to take the uh, the battery pack to uh, Fremont than take the the whole truck to. Uh... Yeah, it depends where the truck is going after. Like That's like true. like the last one, if it's going east and it's already going the right direction, you would be true. you would be sending the batch pack the other way. And at the same time, it's also uh, it also look like um, uh, like they're not uh, at least they're not driving it on the, the roads on the public roads. Maybe maybe they're still they want to do some uh, testing on proving grounds before going on public roads uh, we we haven't we haven't seen any of those two new prototypes driving just yet they've been on the back of trailers so far all right um oh yeah so heart goes out to everyone who is in bad situation right now with the, the blackouts and everything in texas and and uh, a few neighboring states are having issue too i know my, my girlfriend is in mississippi right now and she uh they, they, they got a few uh, rolling blackouts too. Um, yeah, that's, uh, this is pretty significant weather for for this part of the country, really. Yeah, anytime there's snow in the deep south, it's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously they are not equipped to to deal with it uh, in terms of like snow plows and, and everything that comes with it. But uh, yeah, it, in Texas, it's the, I mean, it, it showed some massive weaknesses to to the electric grid that just couldn't indulge at all the people. Uh, because because it wasn't just the snow it, it was the cold it was it was extremely cold it was freezing temperature and people were running their electric heater like crazy and the, the load on the grid was um, also there was some damage i think on the grid too uh, from the the weather but the load was a, was the the biggest issue my understanding and there's been a ton of uh, really bad uh people speculating about what happened and i know that even the even the i think the governor of texas uh even said that it was because of wind turbine freezing yeah but think, really it wasn't yeah no i mean i think it's in that oh yeah in that article i shared it right there you you see here what went down and you see that every all the thermal power plants 25 percent of the output went down 
and renewable went down one percent so i mean who's the culprit here like obviously <laughs> obviously it's the natural gas and the coal power plants that took the biggest hit but yeah uh what it did show it did it, it did show the, the strength of the power walls and all the others own battery packs because um a lot of uh power wall owners in um uh, in Texas, started sharing their backup history, which was pretty crazy. It showed because they, they were they were running some some rolling blackouts, which means like they were planning the blackouts because in places where the, the grid infrastructure was still okay, you just couldn't handle the load. They would have to shut down the electricity in section uh, of neighborhoods and everything because uh, to to lower the load, you know, in order to some people to have some electricity throughout the day at least. Uh, so you can see what it looks like when your grids goes out. So. Uh, during the same day, uh, well, is it the same? Oh, well, at least, yeah, I don't know. The same day. Well, they, these yeah, are all in the same day, it. but I don't know. Twenty-two point five hours of backup within thirty-two events. I don't know if it's all on the same day, but you can see here on the same day you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different events, uh, all about between thirty minutes and an hour and ten minutes. So. Uh, very useful to have your power walls during those times, and if you if you have it combined with solar during the day, it's going to replenish itself and uh, she's fine. Here, uh, the Tesla Owners Club in Austin shared a, a video of um, a whole neighborhood being plunged in the dark, except from one house that uh, has a power a power wall on right there. So you're seeing a lot of those videos being passed around of. Uh, and uh, we've seen one. We've seen the same thing happen in, in in Australia a few years ago. Then uh, two years in last well, the last few big uh, wildfire season in California also has, has has caused a lot of rolling blackouts, and and that spurred a giant interest in, in own battery packs. And I mean, it really shows that the, the future of uh, a strong electric grid is going to be in at least partly in decentralizing uh, energy storage at the home level. Makes a big difference, I think. Yeah, and and why even have to rely a hundred percent on on the grid? Like, it's not super expensive, and it's pretty you know economical to to have solar and a battery backup. Especially you know as prices come down, the grid gets a little bit wonky. You don't even have to think about it. You know, we've been in a few out uh, mm -hmm. outages, and we didn't even know we were in an outage because. That's Powerwall kicks on so quick, yeah. I mean, I the more I think about it, I think your situation with uh, Green Mountain Power in Vermont, mm -hmm. is that yeah. Green Mountain Power? I think they have the best approach. It, it has to be some kind of mix between you can hone your own system if you want, uh, you own, have your own power wall, have your own solar, and be either half grid or connected to the grid with net metering and everything and add some value to that. Or subsidize those battery packs like crazy from the electric utility level and uh, have the advantage of having backup power at a very low cost while uh, your electric utility can use some of that backup power when needed. Because, uh, I mean, if there was a high mix of that in the grid right now in um, in Texas, I mean, I don't know how high it is in Vermont. It's still relatively new. It's it's probably much higher, of course, because uh, lower population and and they were early with that with that program. Uh, but uh, yeah, you, you you'd have a similar situation in Texas, and it would be uh, not not as bad for sure, a lot better. Yeah. All right. Next news items is the Chevy Bolt EUV and EV. Uh, being unveiled, the 2022 version, and are coming this spring. Uh, this spring or this fall? Coming spring. this year. Yeah, this yeah. spring. All right, that was early. So we've been sitting on this for almost a year. Like, uh, mm. uh, we went out to uh, Detroit and saw these two cars um, in March of last year. And the, the Bolt uh, EV was supposed to be a 2021 model that was supposed to come at the end of last year. Um, and then the EUV was supposed to come this year. Um, they weren't supposed to be released at the same time. Um, but Chevy delayed the, uh, the Bolt EV because of the pandemic, I guess. Um, so, you know, as you can tell, like it's a upgraded front end, which some people like, some people don't like. A little bit of upgrade on the back. 
Um, but the big stuff is inside. The interior is much uh, more luxurious. Um, oh, yeah. It's like night and day better. Um, I that was my biggest it. complaint with the with, with the Bolt TV when I when I got it. I mean, especially back then when I tried it, it was like what 2017, 2018. Yeah. And like the model I was I was I was driving was like forty forty three thousand dollar car, right. and the interior felt like a twenty thousand dollar car. So th that's a hard that's a hard pill to swallow. Right. This this is a lot closer to a I mean, and also the price. Well, we're gonna get to that, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, the seats. Uh, another huge complaint from uh, Bolt owners. Although I have to say, like I was in, a, like I wasn't really in that camp. The seats were seemed fine to me, um, but the seats are much much more luxurious. The insides a lot better thought out. Um, you can see from the the pictures, it mm -hmm. it's just a much better experience inside. I actually got to sit in it. Uh, the seats felt way better. Um, you know, side support looks more significant. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Lateral support, back support, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, so, you know, compared to the 2020 model, there's a lot of things to like. Um, but is it, you know, is it something that's going to be, um, you know, are a lot of people going to buy it? I mean, I think so. I think if Chevy put some uh, marketing muscle behind it, I think uh, they could do quite well there. But I, do, I still yeah. don't really know if they're making much of a profit on these these guys. I mean, the um, prices think, are crazy. Where, where, where are the prices in there? These is that thirty-one thousand and thirty-three thousand for the EUV. Yeah, not well, more thirty-two, thirty-two, thirty-four. Yeah, thirty-four. That's so uh, that's great. And then you throw uh, another seven thousand on that, and it gets it, yeah, money. yeah. Because of course, GM doesn't have access right now to the federal tax credit. But if if it does get renewed, like we we think it will, that's a cheap car. I mean, in. In California, it could cost you like less than twenty five thousand yeah. dollars, a brand new Bolt EV, and just a few thousand more for a Bolt EUV, which is, I mean, not exactly what we expected, but like um, the same car, just a tiny bit bigger. <laughs> really, a tiny bit bigger, uh, three yeah. inches more in the in the back, and yeah. like strangely, uh, they put three more inches in the front, right? Like, why wouldn't you? I don't know. Keep the front and move more space in the back. I don't know, but yeah. uh, it's definitely more roomy inside as well. Um, and the, I think the big thing for me is that they have the uh, Super Cruise option on the mm -hmm. EUV, which for me that's a that's a big deal. Um, that's, that's an maybe, option. Do we know how much it costs? Um, I, I don't know if they broke it out, but there's a you know, a version with with Super Cruise and everything else that's like forty three thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the launch edition. Okay, yeah. Uh, usually, it's a twenty five hundred dollar option. Yeah, which is you know, in, yeah. in Tesla's world where yeah. it's like ten grand, uh, that's pretty. Well, pretty good. I mean, let's be like, let's be fair. Right. Technically, it's autopilot. autopilot. It, it, yeah, it's more like autopilot, which is included in the price. Right. And and then, uh, well, it's some of a lot of people argue that Super Cruise is better than the standard autopilot. So, which I don't know if I agree with that, but well, I haven't you don't, tried. You don't Super need Cruise hands. A long time. Yeah. You yeah. You, your, you, you can take your hands off, but at the same time, you can only go on roads that GM has yeah. blessed, which is for sure. The driver monitoring part of it is ten times better than autopilot. So, driver monitoring. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know what? I, what I'll be, I think is going to work great for the EUV uh, as a, if you for for Uber drivers and and taxis and whatnot. Uh, I mean, right ride share drivers. I should say that's, that's what most people use these days. Because I, I remember like when uh, when GM at the Maven thing and they did that program for for ride share drivers uh, with the Bolt EV. That was super popular and. Uh, the, they were doing great. Like all the Bolt TV drivers, the the Uber drivers that were using the Bolt TV um, that I talked to loved it. They said it's great financially. It makes a ton of sense too with uh, driving electric and using that car for uh, for their job. Uh, the only complaint is like for your 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 passengers are in the back seat and the Bolt TV's back seat is not bad, but it wasn't wasn't great either. Uh, you're gonna have, like you said, three more inches. It's it's a big difference for that. Yeah. So, as a, um, if you're riding, if a lot of people are riding as passengers in the back seat, uh, the Bolt EUV is a, is a great option. So I think the and now with the price too at thirty four thousand dollars, if you get, um, I mean, 
probably they're gonna li uh, lease it more i, I feel like uh, most people lease their boat they don't buy it but uh, i think it's gonna be the same thing for ride share owners uh, uh drivers uh, so you had that to it i think uh, i think it's gonna it's gonna come to the exact right pricing for that yeah so there were two kind of downsides there too um one is like hey it's a you know the bolt EUV is an suv why not all-wheel drive so i think a lot of people were hoping for all-wheel drive uh that didn't happen it's front wheel drive only and the other kind of downer was that uh the charging speed the dc fast charging speed you know fast uh, is still 54, 55 kilowatts, which is about half of uh, the speed that most new cars are coming out at. And, uh, you know, we, we asked GM about that and we we're like, come on, you know, like, what's, mm -hmm. what's the problem? And they were like, look, we're trying to hit a price point here. Uh, you know, this is a dead end platform. Mm -hmm. We're not going to, you know, invest in, you know, a faster charging thing when we have the whole Altium line coming down the pike. That's just how it goes. Uh, so for, for people who are okay with that, who don't do a lot of road trips, no big deal. Uh, but you know, if you're, if you're expecting to charge, I think that quickly, it's, it's going to be kind of a bummer. Yeah. I mean, GM strategy on that front is pretty obvious at this point. Like they have the LCM coming up, um, and the bolt is obviously on a whole platform at this point with the older powertrain. So we knew that it wasn't going to be updated with the new version, but if you look so we're thinking all right when when are they going to update it with the old cm then i wouldn't hold my breath with that because if you look everything that's gonna i mean it's it's a mid-cycle update for the chevy bolt tv and and well and, and the launch for the uv but it's very very close vehicle really and uh, so probably gonna run for another four years like that and uh and during those four years GM is mostly going to release more expensive vehicle with the Ultium platform. I mean, the Armor EV for like starts 120 and doesn't go down to 180 for like three years or something. Uh, the Cadillac Lyric and the the other one that has a weird name that I forget. Uh, and the, all Celestic. those cars, Celestic, uh, are are more uh, are going to be more expensive, and it's going to take a while for GM to come down in price with the Ultium, like any new technology, really. And uh, so, so, so by the time that the boat going to be due for a refresh or something, uh, I think I think GM is going to introduce the LCM to it or it might be like a, a refresh or they might do a whole they might scrap the whole boat TV altogether and just launch a different vehicle in the same segment or something. I hope they keep it. It would be nice. I think they could go really low end because, you know, the the Balti the Altiums come in like 50 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt or 150 kilowatt. I think they could do a really low end 50 kilowatt, maybe, you know, 20 something thousand dollar bolt uh, with the Altium, but, you know, quicker charging and uh, some other nice stuff. Maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe not 20, but 25 or something like that. Right. Like that, that, would, that would still make sense. Like, yeah, uh, that like would be a nice car. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, on the not so good news, uh, Mercedes Benz uh, can sell the launch of the QC electric SUV altogether in the US. Uh, this week Ooh. so if you remember the car has been around for a while now uh 2000 end of 2019 really was launch uh, then yeah, uh, we, we both we both drove one right yeah yeah i went all the way to norway to to like the no, normally the european automakers they don't invite us to go drive their car in europe unless they plan to launch it in the us and the, the plan back then was to launch it in the us in 2020 uh but then early in 2020 they decided to push it to 2021 we are now in 2021, and um, the automaker confirmed uh, in an interview with Autoblog that uh, the following, I'm quoting, following a comprehensive review of market developments, the EQC will not be offered in the U.S. for now. So they might change, but for now, it's 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 canceled. So they, they don't have plans to do it right now. So unless some of those market developments that they didn't specify what they are, uh, change, then um, then it won't launch. So, I mean, I I, th I think it's quite obvious what's happening here. It, it's the EQC is sort of turning into a compliance car, which ooh, that's a bad word. Like, don't use it. Uh, but uh, I mean, that's it, it's just it. 
it's not the volume is just not there like it, if it was if it wouldn't be a compliance car if they had the volume if they had the volume they would ship it to the us and try to sell it for the us for sure like audi audi has a higher volume with the e-tron like the, the, this would be a very competitive vehicle with the audi e-tron but um how they invested more in a higher volume production and that's how allows them to sell a lot of them in europe most of them are sold in europe for sure but they have enough volume that they send some to the U.S. They don't sell that much in the U.S., but it's still, it's still some decent sales. Uh, Mercedes is not there yet. They don't produce the vehicle in high enough uh, capacity, so they, they sell it where it counts, and for them, it counts a lot more in Europe because of the regulation there that forces them to have a higher mix of EVs in their fleets uh, to lower their overall fleet emissions. So, yeah, we're not getting uh, an EQC, but they did confirm that they, they will bring the EQS this year to the US. Well, so that's, uh, that's the sedan. Yeah, I mean, hopefully. Which kind kind of weird. Uh, like it shows you, like technically, the SUVs sells better in the US than than a, a sedan. So why would you bring a sedan? The reason is that they are making it in a higher volume, and they're going to be making it in a thing in a higher volume. It's a bigger vehicle program for them. Uh, of course, though, the Mercedes is. Uh, has an expertise in sedan i feel like they like they, they do have like the glc and everything the great cars and whatnot but uh, uh i i think like the the s class is kind of iconic and uh, even, even yeah. the c class too so uh, the eqs is obviously going to be an s class competitor so yeah but i mean we we uh we both drove the eqc and we i i don't know about you but i thought it was a really nice ride yeah, yeah it was a great car or For sure. SUV. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of people saying, well, Mercedes isn't competitive in, in, you know, with, with like Tesla's in the U S and I do get that a little bit, um, because the mileage is so low comparatively, but I, you know, I also think like if they really wanted to sell here, they would, they would sell pretty good. I mean, just, just like we talked about the bolt, I mean, there, there's some limitation uh, I mean, that has longer range for sure, but the, with the charging and everything, it doesn't make it great for, uh, road trips i would argue the eqc is probably not great for road trips either but i mean if you're for for an around town suv to get your kids to soccer and whatnot like it's, it's, it's it would be a great car and if you're a mercedes owner already i mean it's 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 an, the easiest transition ever for from a, a mercedes suv to the eqc because it's very much a mercedes car like they didn't cut any corners on that front and everything and uh, you get everything you'd expect in an SUV. It's just in a Mercedes SUV. It's just electric. Yeah. All right. So last week we talked about, or two weeks ago, whenever when uh, Ford announced that uh, they were doubling their electric vehicle investment to to twenty two billion dollars through twenty twenty five. We noted that it's nice and everything, but uh, they didn't they didn't they didn't release anything concrete what they're gonna do with that money. Like they just said. Double the investment, twenty-two billion dollars. It's going to be great. This week they release uh, more concrete details, or at least for one of those twenty-two billion dollars, one of those is or is going to go to transform uh, their uh, their factory in Cologne, uh, Cologne, uh, Germany. Uh, so they have a, they already have a factory there, but they're going to revamp it all to become an electric vehicle factory, bringing their first uh, high volume EV to market in Europe. Um, passenger car in 2023 so they didn't really reveal which one it's going to be a lot of people are assuming it's going to be the one with the MEB platform that they are supposed to have in partnership with vw um but it's going to be built by them so that's not that's not clear they didn't confirm that there was the MEB in the press release uh, but and they also said that there a second vehicle is being considered for uh to be built at the location a second electric vehicle so yeah, I think uh, Autocar, uh, a UK-based uh, website, said something about a smaller Mustang-like vehicle that was based on the MEB platform, um, which would make a lot of sense. Like, you mm -hmm. know, there's already uh, we already know Ford in Europe is going to or in Germany is going to be building a lot of MEB uh, platform vehicles, so this this is probably the uh, the announcement for that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's, they also uh, released some goals in terms of electrification. Should mention them real quick. They said that by mid 2026, 100 percent of uh, Ford's passenger vehicle range will be zero emission capable, uh, electric or plug-in hybrid. So the way I interpret that is that 
for every model that they sell, they're going to have an all electric or plug-in version, uh, which it's never, I'm never impressed by that, those kinds of announcements. Like it's, because to me, it sounds like an ionic, like where you have like the, the hybrid, the plug-in hybrid, and a, which, which is never high deal. But anyway, uh, more significantly, they did say that will be completely all electric by 2030. So that that's more exciting to me for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ford is also big in Europe, well, also in the US, but in Europe uh, they have a, a big commercial division, and they say that they will be uh, zero emission capable all electric again or plug-in hybrid by 2024 across the commercial lineup, and they expect that two thirds of their sales will be all electric or plug-in hybrid by 2030 for the commercial side of the order business. Mm -hmm. So I mean, not not bad. Uh, those are those are, are good goals to have. Uh, I think in Europe, uh, I would like uh, Ford to have similar goals in the U.S. But uh, if those are their goals in Europe, I would expect that uh, it's not coming close to that in the U.S. Uh, and it should be. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you have any question, put them in the comments right now. We're gonna get to them in a second. We just have one more uh, news item to discuss here, and um. That's that's an interesting one here. Like with the all the SPAC deals these days that are happening in the EV world, not a lot of them are getting me very excited. Some of them are fun. Some others, I'm like, yeah, I'm like just opportunistic. Not, not that this one is not opportunistic. It is too, but it's one that's more exciting to me uh, for 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 a few personal reasons, of course, because they're close to, to here, like they they are uh, located in Quebec. But I've been following Taiga for, for, for a long time. I mean, I've tested their first prototype of their electric snowmobile back in 2018. I was really impressed by it, and they improved on it a lot since. And now they are going public with a lot of money, so we, we should expect them to reach production, volume production, a lot easier with that, with that backup. Um, so they're doing the reverse merger like everybody's doing right now. They're doing it with the uh, Canacore Genuity Growth 2 founds. Uh, so that's trading on the um, uh, Toronto exchange and the Neo exchange. I'm not sure. Is that, do you know that? The Neo exchange, is that for the U.S. people that they, so they could invest to in U.S. dollars? I don't I'm know not that. familiar. I've heard the name. I just don't yeah. know what it means. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're getting $100 million through the deal, uh, and they're going to be valued at $500 million, which is uh, which is significant for a company that's just starting now deliveries of their snowmobiles. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. I like the team. They, they kind of spun out of the, the McGill University engineering program, and uh, they, they saw an opportunity to electrify uh, all power sports, really, starting with the snowmobile, which is a very mission-producing vehicle, really. And um, But they, they figured if you develop a powertrain, a good electric powertrain, robust enough for a snowmobile and everything, you, you can leverage that and produce electric watercraft and uh, eventually ATVs and, and all, all power sport vehicles. Uh, so that's what they, they want to do. And uh, they're going public to, to make that happen. So uh, I threw a few bucks their way. Uh, if you want to do the same, we are not advisor, financial advisor. You do your own due diligence and everything. But uh, I think I think it's an interesting project. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get on the, one of those yeah, those jet are fun skis. reviews, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, as jet skis, it's not a jet ski. It's officially a brand, but everybody calls them jet skis. It's a personal watercraft. Right. Uh, yeah, they, they do look fun. And I mean, they, they're getting some great performance out of them. Like, I don't like the snowmobile world is kind of a crazy one, too. Like, there's some people here that are just snowmobile nuts. Like, they, they leave and breed snowmobiles. I never enjoyed it that much because of the sound. I have to be honest with you. The sound, uh, the vibration is also pretty crazy, but the sound uh, always killed me. Like you're, I mean, your nature. I just went skiing too, like in in Montana. My first time skiing in years. I'm like, this is beautiful. Like wow. And then rah, a crazy snowmobile will go rides by you and like what. Like it just it kills like the moment in nature and everything, and those ones I mean there's still a sound especially if you crank them up a lot because they, they are very high performances zero to a hundred kilometers an hour in two point nine seconds, and Magic Motor does have a winding sound, but if you're just cruising and everything and this is this is very very fun to use, so it's like it, it's the the mission of the company is really to electrify power sports by bringing performance electric vehicles that have better performance than their gasoline powered counterparts 
So it, it makes sense to to to, uh, uh, to to buy the electric version because they offer a higher performance. And at the same time, by doing that, you you remove the emissions and the sounds from that power sport that enables you to enjoy it more uh, and be uh, one with nature, if you will. Yeah, exciting stuff. All right, so if you have any questions, let's let's dive in right now. All right, uh, first question from the Jose. Uh, we were talking about uh, the green bill. Test I uh, really hope Tesla doesn't pump up the prices once the green bill passes and seven thousand dollar tax credit is up for grabs. Thoughts? Uh, that would look bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would look crazy bad. But at the same time, when when the the credit did, uh, went away, Tesla did reduce the price. They hit the bullet there in in the U.S. They reduced the price of their vehicles. So, I mean, I guess it goes both ways. But I doubt it, especially with now introducing that new lower price with um uh with the green bill being coming at the very least like we we know it exists we think it's coming so i don't think that's gonna happen personally yeah i, I hope not all right uh isaac luttrell they should put retroactive to january 1st in the bill draft bill so people will keep buying uh isn't that the point to drive sales great point there yeah uh, yeah i completely agree with that like yeah that would, that would, also, smart. it makes sense for tax credit with like uh, every call deliver in the tax year and everything, but I don't know. Yeah, he is, has a corollary to that. Big three auto don't want it retroactive. I, I, well, big three, what is big three anymore? Yeah, is that Tesla closer? is bigger than all big threes. <laughs> right. So, uh, I think maybe Ford doesn't want that, but big three auto doesn't want it retroactive because they oh, yeah. can't produce and would lose out to Tesla. Yeah, for um, sure. Ford and Chrysler are not. Completely on, like they, they are the ones that are more vintage by it right now. Yeah. At uh, the same time, uh, companies like all these two, they take advantage of that right now. Like, all right. Wayne O says the NTSB has regulations on steering wheels, and only custom cars are allowed to have non conforming steering wheels. I've heard some of that, but I think yeah, it's apparently, ambiguous. Yeah. Tesla apparently is very confident that the butterfly wheel would, would, would be allowed to. So. All right, uh, this is something we didn't talk about. Can you guys comment on Tesla lease pricing for three and why? I heard it's down forty dollars a month or so. Did we check that out? Yeah, I did. I did look at the the pricing. They they were updated in in line with the um, with with. But when, when you say it, down by forty dollars, not down two. Yeah, not down two. <laughs> yeah. So uh, but, but yeah, yeah, they, they 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 were they were updated in line with. Um, uh, with the price decrease for the uh, if you buy the car like in the purchase price uh, and yeah they do make a lot of sense uh, and, and those are going to also be affected by the uh, tax rate if it does come in though because if the car is leased then the automaker is allowed to take the the, the tax credit there so uh, and and apply that to to the the pricing of the of the car over over the lease to to, to the lease price uh, so that reduced the price a lot. I mean, I, I remember when um, when Chevy still had access to to the tax credit, the Bolt TV had like a hundred and forty two dollar a month uh, lease at one point. So with the thirty seven thousand dollar price now on the Model Three, and if it does get the seven thousand, and the lease price in California will will go will be pretty cheap. Yeah. All right, uh, Luso Sailor says the old Citroen CX had a strange blinker knob too. That's in reference to uh, the new Model S and X uh, blinker situation. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like a knob, a knob for a blinker. Yeah, uh, for me, it's like you know that, that it has to be much better than the current situation for it to be worth changing because everybody drives normal cars or all the time, so. I, it, I hope it's a lot better. Well, the idea is like on the highway, you're using autopilot. Autopilot will pull the blinker by itself. Right. And then uh, if you're driving, normally you have both ends on the steering wheel and your thumbs are going to be where the blinkers are anyway. So you just boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. So you have a D-pad. <laughs> All right. Shane O'Sullivan says, have you seen the new FreeWire 120 kilowatt DC charge point that was installed in the UK last week? With 160 kilowatt hours onboard battery, looks really interesting and only requires 28 kilowatt grid connection. 
I'm aware of the free wires uh, combination of battery and, and, and fast charging. I didn't know about a specific one installed in the UK, but yeah, I mean, a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, charging companies are looking into that now, just to to have battery capacity to, because uh, then you 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 completely avoid um, those peak charges that are pretty crazy. Yeah, jacks up the price a little bit though. Yep. Um, and obviously, like if somebody's charging for you know, there's like a lineup of mm -hmm. people willing to charge that 120 or 160 kilowatt hours. Doesn't charge in between, you know? yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Green Gold says Chevy EV looks pretty nice for 33K. Uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the front end, to be honest. But uh, other than that, I think, yeah, it's a big improvement. All right. What did I pass up here? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think Tesla will make a more affordable LFP power wall? Good question. If it can get a lot of LFP batteries, maybe. I mean, uh, I, is Sonnen that use LFP, I think? Was that right? Uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I think Sonnen did use LFP at some point, at least, or, or something close to that chemistry. But, but yeah, I mean, LFP could make sense for, for, for Powerwall. Uh, but, I mean, any, anything you can do to not, not just, I mean, at this point, you don't even need to make it more affordable. You just need to make more because people will buy it at that price. Um, of course, if they, they make more, then they can make it more affordable too. So that's added bonus. Yeah. All right, Brent uh, says you need a full circle wheel for handling in case of emergencies. We did talk about that a little bit. Uh, Not if you change the turning radius that you don't have to, to, to go like all the way that right. way. You just, you just make it so that if you turn just that much on the wheel, well, it, it turns that much in the car and whatnot. And yeah, so we were talking about... Uh, uh, steering by wire yeah. uh, at that point, which I think we saw previously Tesla had some like patents or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah they, they've been working on that. But we, we, I think everyone assumes that that's in the Mall S right now. Uh, so back to, uh, we were talking about Texas being out of power. Uh, the culprit is uh, Arthur K. Load says the culprit is the fossil based death grip on Texas politicians, which seems pretty obvious to be true i mean even with tesla uh making huge investments in te texas they seem to still think that yeah. uh oil and gas are i mean i was shocked by the uh, amount of uh, uh people that were uh, carbon dioxide poisoning monoxide uh, yeah carbon monoxide sorry uh, poisoning i was like that like hundreds and hundreds of cases yeah. that happened since it was freezing and like and jimmy had a good point where I was like, yeah, I mean, that that doesn't have to be your first thought. Like, let's start the car in the garage. That makes no. First of all, everyone should know that you shouldn't do that. Like, that's start with. But also, that should, even even if you could, let's say, it, it shouldn't be a first thought. Like, just put some blankets, just put more more uh, clothes on, and, and uh, like keep warm. But Jimmy was like, hey, it's Texas. Your first thought is like, let's burn some fossil fuels. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Uh, you know, I'm I'm in Vermont. Uh, we snowboard all day, like literally out in zero degree weather all day long, mm -hmm. and don't even like, you know, like it's well when you're of... snowboarding, you're like you're, you're you're doing exercise and everything that keeps yeah. you warm too. But I mean, even then, it can it can be minus ten, and of course, I'm I'm better equipped than most people in Texas. But I mean, right. it gets gets cold too in Texas. Like people have sweaters, they have blankets and whatnot. Like right. you can keep yourself warm if you need to. Like, go start the car in the garage. Like, and also, it's not. It's not like oh, they're poor. They cannot afford blankets. You have a garage. <laughs> if you have a right. garage, you can afford blankets. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of rough. I don't have a garage, and I have blankets. All right, Wayne O says the government can't tax power. You can make stores, so there's no incentive for government to promote it. Uh, they can tax building it. They can tax. I mean, electricity. Wait, they can. what? What? The, so, in the U.S., the power is not taxed. It's taxed for sure, but yeah, he, he, he's saying you can't tax solar power that you generate on your roof and bring into your house. I mean, the, you 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 could tax the the power at the uh, the panels and everything. That's already done, really. But though there's the ITC that counters that, but still, like, yeah. you, all right, let's move on. Shane O'Sullivan, when you are heating your home with a heat pump, it will eat into the battery storage pretty quickly, pulling between two to four kilowatts every hour. Yeah, I mean, heat pumps actually way, way more efficient than uh, resistive heating. 
which I think probably most people in Texas had, which is probably mm -hmm. one of the big problems with the grid, which is like, it's not, they didn't really expect everybody to have to deal with like below zero degree weather uh, with their electric heaters. Um, Lake Nona, LOL. You could argue that any new car model coming out in 2022 should be adopting 800 volt batteries. Thoughts? Um, it depends on the pricing, I guess. Like uh, right now, what we're seeing is like every 800 volt vehicle is a lot more expensive. Like Taycan, the e-tron GT, and uh, the Model uh, new Model S, and uh, yeah, the first inexpensive ones are Hyundai's. The, the Ionic line is a eight hundred volt, I think. The new Ionic line, yeah, yeah the new line is not yet. Although yeah. we don't know the price for that just yet, right? But, but we I, assume that it's not going to be Hyundai. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the idea with eight hundred volt is it's half. You you only need half the amperage, which means yeah. you need much smaller wires and. You could theoretically charge it much faster, and those all seem like good things to do. But it's more expensive to have a higher mm -hmm. voltage systems. All right. Uh, did you have the opportunity to check the website Enroads? Oh yeah, we didn't do that. Did you do that? I didn't do that. <laughs> all right, we didn't do our homework. Sorry. Enroads. Type it around. All right. Tesla is smart, says Brent. They are basically the VW of the 1937s. Uh, if he can get every American driving one, he will indeed be a genius. All right. Moving on. Justin Moore, when do you think there will be a largest electric SUVs on the market other than the Model X? Along the Rivian, the, the new Rivian. That's the new Rivian. Yeah, it's big. And also, uh, VW's got the ID, what is it, 6? Six? 6. Seven. The 6 is pretty big, too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that's more of a Ford Explorer on the pilot competitor, I guess, because the Rivian is a little bit more expensive uh, than than that. Though the Rivian, we'll, we'll get the seventy five hundred tax credit if it's still there, or the seven thousand if it's by then. It's, but uh, Rivian's got a third row, right? Yep, can get a third row thing on, on the one. Are you, uh, do you one, are you still one, thinking S about getting a Rivian? Can I can I maybe get that? Uh... Yeah, you were thinking about like uh, yeah. if we can change it. Like uh, I'll, I'll let. I think you you can. It makes more sense for you to have the electric pickup for now. I can. I can wait. Uh, no, I, I'm not going to get the pickup. I was, I was well, they already SUV. I mean, yeah. like a big, a big, a big truck. Yeah, right. I still have my reservation and everything. We need the big wheels in Vermont. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Pre runner wannabe says, "Do you think with the SR plus price cut, SR Model Three buyers?" Could upgrade to an SR Plus for less. Or, I, 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 don't, I I don't think the SR exists anymore. At this yeah, point. yeah, I mean, I, it was kind of phased out at the end of last year. Yeah, I don't think I don't, like what we've been hearing is like you cannot really like get it, and and even even if you could, like it was thirty five thousand dollars, but they cut a bunch of things, and now at thirty seven thousand, like two, like the things that you get for those two thousand dollars would like no brainer. Yeah. So. Uh, what do we think of Spark Charge? Should Josh Aviv meet Joe Biden and produce millions of portable level three EV chargers that fit in your trunk? I don't. I don't get that that much. Uh, this whole thing, like this portable, uh, I a Spark Charge makes sense for me for like, um, uh, like triple A's and and, and, yeah. and things like that. Like that, that makes a lot of sense. Like all triple A's vehicles should have a Spark Charge. Or the equivalent of it and everything, but like, I don't get why like, people. Like, you have a big battery in an electric car. It's like, oh, let's add some battery and efficiently in the trunk, so that they can charge it and like stop. Like, no, if if Biden needs to do anything, it's more charger everywhere. Like you can get, that you don't have to carry the battery with you to get there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I don't like that logic that people have. Uh, like uh, the only thing that makes sense is like uh, you're you're going to the desert, for example, and like you really need to go through it. You really need more batteries. So, uh, let's put a spark charge in your back, the back of your truck, and yeah, because but you're gonna be less efficient doing that than just stopping at a charging station. So, if you can charge a charging station, it's always a better solution. Yeah. All right. Uh, in regard to LFP uh, power walls, K Star uses cattle LFPs. I don't, I don't even know what K Star is. I've heard of it. I can't remember where. Sounds like a rapper or something. I think you're thinking of World Star. All right. No, Taylor. I mean, I know what World Star is, but I like. 
Clear Star uh, could be a rapper on World Star. Uh, Taylor Zeller Newman says, "Will be interesting to see if aging vehicle programs, Bolt, Leaf, i3, etc., will continue to chase the higher range charging targets, or start to lower MSRP and let future programs push on spec wise." Uh, definitely I'm, the latter, I think. Yeah, I mean, the, those cars, the i3 in particular, I believe. Um, I, I just think that. Well, I two is pretty much dead. I think yeah. the 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 leaf. Uh, I, th I think it's gonna go the the second way, just lo lower prices, and the Aria and future vehicle from Nissan's gonna take over. And GM, it's pretty obvious that's what's happening with the old Sion and whatnot. Yeah, we talked about that before a little bit. Uh, the new Bolt is certainly less exciting, but it's cool to finally see the price start to take down a touch. I mean, if you've been following the Bolt, um, we have a, a a page on Electrek about the prices. They've been cutting the price of Bolt uh, for over a year now. Pretty, pretty ever since the the tax rebate disappeared, Chevy Chevy's been getting it down to around thirty thousand anyway. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see the price now of the old of the twenty twenty one Bolt. Like, because it's still gonna, are they still producing it, or uh, even if they're not, like whatever yeah, inventory can, is left? You, yeah, if you can get one of those, they're gonna be quite inexpensive. Because yeah, because there's now difference. you have the new one. Yeah, right. you have the, the new one that is not only better in a bunch of ways; it's also got cheaper at the MSRP. So, the MSRP of the other one, or even the brand new one, is gonna have to go down. Yeah, uh, there's gonna be some very inexpensive bolts out there. Oh yeah, twenty thousand and things like that. Uh, the automakers should be pushing for solid state batteries. Uh, Some are. Volkswagen yeah, is BMW, for sure. BMW for sure. Toyota. Uh, electric, electric. Yeah, Toyota. All right. Electric blankets with uh, blue Letty power storage would have helped a lot in Texas. Well, <laughs> you know, if you have a, a battery powered electric mm -hmm. blanket. Congratulations, yeah. you're not going to freeze to death. <laughs> Electric blankets use very little energy overall. That's a good point. Um, you know, if you're talking about keeping yourself warm, probably the most efficient way to do it electrically mm -hmm. is with an electric blanket. I guess if uh, maybe you live in Texas and you're worried about the next storm, that might be a good investment. Mm -hmm. I'll look into those weighted blankets. Love them. That's what I use. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> uh, Tommy A says the new Model S is 800 volts question. Uh, do we know the, that? I, I think, think so. so. No, oh, is it? I think so. Um, or at least the plaid version. Yeah, the plaid version. Yeah. I yeah. think we thought. Um, yeah, and and likely Tesla will move that around its line in the years ahead. Uh, interesting to see Volvo EV trucks becoming very normal in Norway, as was seen in Tesla Bjorn's recent video with four trucks charging at ABB 150 kilowatt high power chargers. Um, I did see that. Um, I don't know how normal that is, though. But... Yeah, that's just one one instance in one place in Norway. Yeah. Um, yeah, it would be I, cool. I'd like uh, to know how, how many of them were delivered in Norway. Period. I don't. I don't think it's a very high number, but yeah, the Volvo is definitely the a, le a leader, though, in the electrification of of. of uh, mid-sized trucks uh commercial yeah. trucks yeah and our last comment is the <laughs> bolt has horrible styling i disagree i i was a bolt owner for three years i love that car i i'm thinking about getting another one as crazy as it is time <laughs> all right we're gonna end it on that thanks everyone for listening or watching on youtube facebook the weather wherever you're watching on your podcast app we appreciate you and I'm going to see you same place, same time next week.